In this demonstration, I'll explain to you the SPFX solution anatomy. So when you run the Yerman generator, so by default there are many folders getting created and also many files. So in this lecture, I'll explain to you the significance of each of those folders. So for this, let me go ahead and try to create a new folder, something like say project anatomy demo, and then switch to that folder and then simply run the Yerman utility. So we are basically trying to create a brand new solution and uh, we're not going to implement any uh, functionality in this code, but we, we will just go and see the significance of each and every folder. Okay, I'll leave the solution name as it is, and then I'm going to select SharePoint Online only, and I'll be using the current folder. And uh, so here it is asking you, like, do you want to allow the tenant admin the choice of being able to deploy the solution to all sites immediately without running any feature deployment or adding apps in the sites? So default is no. So most of the in the previous demonstrations I said no but this time I'm going to say yes to you because I'll just show you in the next lecture in fact uh, uh, selecting S and how does it impact our SPFX solution. Uh, just to be on the safe side uh, when we select yes that means we don't have to install this app in our SharePoint tenant site collections so it will be available to you by default and you will be able to use them in the pages. If I select no, then we have to install the app in the corresponding site collection before we use this web part onto a page. So in this demonstration, I'm intentionally going for S. And the next one it is asking you will the components in the solution require permissions to access APIs that are unique and not shared with other components in the tenant. So even in the previous demonstrations, we said no, but so basically if I say yes in this scenario, your web part, uh, this SPFX solutions will be called as isolated web parts. So I will not be concentrating on this aspect in this demonstration. So, but I will st still keep it as yes, because I want to show you where we can see what we have selected here. So I selected S here as well as S here. Okay. And then I'm going for a, a web part. And what's your web part name? It's Hello World. And what's the web part description? Notice here, because I selected S for this one, which is for the isolated web parts, it is only asking me, would you want to create a web part? Do you like to create a web part or extension or library? Normally, had I selected no here, you will have the options of creating a web part or extensions or libraries. Because I selected yes, so that means it's going to be an isolated web part. I don't have an option for creating an extension or library when you select S for this one. So that is something that you, you should observe. Perfect. So I leave the default description and then I use the no, ja no JavaScript framework. So as soon as the project structure gets created by the Ehrman generator, we'll simply go back to the Visual Studio code and we will have a quick look at the different folders and different files and their significance. So you can see now the solution has been created successfully. So I can simply open this in my Visual Studio code by just typing code dot. And once we are in the Visual Studio code, we have different folders like config, we have node modules, we have source, SRC folder, we have a Teams folder. So as of now, I'm seeing some four different folders here, including that VS Code, we have five. But the most important folders I'll, I'm, I'll be focusing here. First, let's get into the config folder. Now, basically this folder contains all the configurational files for your SPF, SPFX solution. So first, let me take you to my config.json. So what this config.json is doing, it is basically having something like say bundles. And uh, this is where the name of the bundle is defined and also what this bundle, which components it will contain is decided here. So by default, the name of this bundle, they're giving, they're calling it as hello, hello world web part, which is the name of my solution when I create it. Sorry, the name of the web part. And then 
how many components does this solution so far has got it it, it just ha has got one web part basically so what is the entry point for that uh, web part file will be this js file yes obviously we will be doing all of our code using the typescript but at the time of uh, compilation those files will be converted to the javascript files and will be kept in the lib folder notice here i don't see the lib folder still here i will show you when we will get it so that's the entry point is this javascript file of, of my web path and then this component obviously needs the manifest file which contains the metadata so that is obviously coming from the source folder which is this one and then inside that you have a web parts folder inside that you have the file called as hello world web part dot manifest dot json so this is the file that it is trying to speak to as the manifest file so this is that information that we have in the config.json so currently the external section is empty but as i uh, i will show you in my future lectures you know when i try to work with jquery or any other third party libraries so then you have to include them in the external section so basically when we include them as external section they will not be part of your bundle so that's the advantage of uh, using external libraries and also we have something like localized resources so by default we have something like hello world web part strings so which we can see pretty much in the uh, i'll show you it's basically meant for the localization so we have a dedicated chapter for localization so where i'll show you how to display the content of your page in different languages like spanish or french like that so again it is looking for in the lib folder which is not at created because we haven't built it under web parts under your project folder web part folder there is an loc folder and then there will be something like locale.js file so which can be a bit dynamic so currently if you notice under my source folder there is loc which has got basically the locale as enus.js which is the default language setting for your spfx solution perfect so that is what is being uh, mentioned inside our config.json next we will concentrate on the next file which is copy assets.json we don't really make any changes to this file but there is only one entry here called as deploy cdn path which is by default specified to the temp and deploy folder but i don't see a temp folder still in my folder structure because you will be getting that when i actually bundle it and build it and when we make the package solutions and all i'll show you that process pretty shortly so but by default what happens there will be a temp folder that gets created inside that there will be a, a deploy folder which basically contains the client side assets so which needs to be deployed to the cdns in fact i'll show you in the deployment section when we try to deploy our so uh, when we try to host our web part using office 365 cdn or uh, by using the microsoft azure cdn you will get to know the significance of this temp and uh, deploy folder and um, whatever files the deploy folder will have we will simply copy them over to the office 365 cdn or the azure 3 uh, azure storage containers so that part we will see when in the deployment section but for the time being you just have to understand when we do the deployment part you should be familiar with the folder structure which is temp slash deploy and then we have another important file called as deploy azure storage.json file this file is again pretty much relevant to the deployment aspects and that too when you are deploying specifically to the microsoft azure so then you have to specify certain configurational information inside the deploy azure storage.json so i will show you what information we have to fill in into this file when we do deployment to the azure 3, azure cdn but for the time being if you are already familiar with azure i will give you some information so in this json file we need to supply our the storage account name that we have in the microsoft azure and also the container name so by default it is automatically taking my project name 
as my container name but this container name can be a bit different so this container we have to create with this name in the microsoft uh, azure sites and uh, this storage account will have a specific access key which we have to get it from your azure site again so once we do all that stuff in the microsoft azure portal so that information we have to supply here when we want to deploy your spfx web part to the azure cdn so again i'll show you how to use this file when we do deployment to the azure cdn next then we have another important file called as package solution.json so this is obviously the most important file for us as developers so this package solution.json contains your project name and also the guid for your project and then the version and by default the include client side assets is true and we also can see two different options here like skip featured deployment is true and is domain isolated is true now why these things are true is because when we created our project we said s means it should be deployed automatically to all the sites immediately i said yes so this option is nothing but skip feature deployment to true and also will the component in the solution require permissions to access i said yes that is nothing but is domain isolated is true had i selected no for this and no for this you would have seen them as false and false i think by default when we select no you don't even see these two lines uh, in the package solution.json you don't see them as uh, skip feature deployment as false and ease domain isolated as false it simply will not have these two lines when you say no for those two questions so again skip feature deployment is true means as i said the spfx solution once we deploy to the app catalog of your sharepoint online tenant it will be it is ready to be used in the different site collections of the tenant automatically if you make this to false then you have to install in a site collection where you would like to use it and this is domain isolated i'm not going to concentrate it's a, it's a big concept for for the time being if you want to make your web part to be executed as an isolated web part then you have to select s yes for that second option so that's where it, it makes this as true but anyway i will be demonstrating this uh, to you the skip feature deployment option in the next lecture on the same solution in fact okay also in the package solution.json you have something like paths which is the zip package and uh, basically what happens again i don't see any folder called as solution in this my folder structure is because it is still not created because we haven't that uh, package dot solution so it's like uh, your cabinet file in your windows terminology so when i try to package my solution i will get a solution folder here and the name of my solution package is in the extension is spp kg file which is your sharepoint package solution package and the name of the file is my solution name which is anatomy demo dot spp kg so you will get this file into the solution folder perfect so that's about this package solution dot json next we have something like serve dot json which is basically meant because we can test our spfx solutions locally with the local server so that is where the port number where the local server will be running and then the the trust dev certificate which we have uh, earlier installed and this initial page is going to be this local server workbench and this api has got few other configurations here so this will be obviously used by the local server when we try to test uh, your spfx solutions on the local environment before you move them to the sharepoint online next we have another important file called as write manifests.json uh, which is basically containing the cdn base path so currently nothing is specified i have used uh, this file write manifests.json in the deployment section where i i demonstrated how to host your web parts to the office 365 cdn or how to host your web parts to the uh, azure cdn so that's where this file will be used so i'm not going to touch these files 
uh, until we reach to the deployment topic. Perfect. So now you understood the significance of each and every JSON file in the config folder. So as far as the node modules is concerned, so basically all the libraries, all the NPM packages got downloaded and they, they basically got added to the node modules folder in different folders. So that is what has happened uh, when we try to create our solution using the Yeoman generator. So this is a very big folder, I mean, in terms of the file size. So, so normally, we, I mean, we don't have to copy this entire stuff every time because even if without the node modules folder, we can always run npm install command to download those dependencies again. And obviously the source folder is the folder that's where we spend all our lives. So currently, yes, it has got a web parts folder and then there's a subfolder called as hello world. And our and this has got a TypeScript file. And this has got your style sheet. And then there is a manifest.json. And there is a locale enus for the English US. And there is a mystrings.d.ts. So that's where this hello world part strings, which is the module, which is basically getting exported. So you will get to know all these things when we do some co concepts related to the localization section. Perfect. And uh, we also have a folder called as uh, Teams so that has got only a couple of images uh, a shot i mean uh, an outline image and then the uh, another image here of different file sizes so you will understand the purpose of this folder and these files when i try to show you how to create tabs in the microsoft teams perfect so rest of them are not very important but there is one important file called as uh, gulp file dot to js file so that's where when we are using the gulp utility to that's where this file will kick in so basically it is trying to create an instance for the sp build web from the microsoft module sp build web module and that's where the things are getting initialized here so this file is very important Lastly, we have a package.json file. So this file contains basically this node engine version. So whatever node engine version, so the, the node is required for running this SPFX solution successfully. And uh, it is also having the production dependencies as well as the dev dependencies for your solution. So you can see currently, on my system, I have 1.10.0 SPFX, SP code library. And we also have types, and these are the dependencies when we move the solution to the production. And these are only on the dev dependencies like gulp, types. So all these things are only required for me to build my solution locally. So that is the difference between the production dependencies and then the dev dependencies. So this is how we have different files here and the readme.md file is purely for documentation so probably people whoever uses your solution so you may put some notes for them so that's purely meant for the solution maintenance part so that is how in this demonstration i've shown you the significance of uh, different folders so now what we will do we will see when we, when will i get that folders like lib temp distribution and solution folders so to show you the different folders that gets created when we try to build bundle or package the solution let me show you here first what i'm trying to do we always have to compile our solution when i say gulp build and your solution will be compiled and some special folders will be added to your solution so you can notice here we have a new folder called as lib and when i expand my lib folder you can see the lib folder basically has got all those javascript files where the typescript files were compiled so when i expand my web parts you can see your ts files got converted to the javascript files and we also have the typescript definition files and your sas files got converted to the css files so that is what that's that's what gets happen when you basically build your solution okay so once we have the lib folder in place now after build i'm going to bundle so that's where 
the minification of the JavaScript files will happen. So when I try to use the gulp bundle, I got two new folders. One is the temp folder. The other one is the distribution folder. So this is where all the temporary files uh, will be here, uh, which the I mean, which the solution uses when you try to work the work with the solution locally. And currently, I can see there is a JS file, and then there is some JSON file. Okay, we are I mean, we are not interested into into the content of these two files, but we should know that when we try to bundle our solution, we get this temp folder. For me, the most important is the distribution folder. So the distribution folder contains a JSON file. I mean, this is the GUID for your uh, web path. And uh, also you have the JavaScript files here. And this manifest.json also points to the default local server here because that is what it uses when you try to test your solution locally. So now we have seen three extra folders. Um, when we try to bundle, we got temp and distribution. And when we try to build, we got the lib folder. So finally, I'm going to say gulp package solution. And then when I press enter, so that's where your SPPKG file will be created into a special folder called as SharePoint. So when I expand my SharePoint folder, you can see the SPPKG file. And this is what you're supposed to take it to the, your, your SharePoint online tenant, which I'll show you in the next lecture. And also this has got the debug folder. And this debug folder contains all the raw files of your package. So that's how you can dissect what the SPPKG file contains internally. So that is how in this demonstration, we have seen the significance of different folders of your SPFX solution.